Okay, modelers, so we're going to do a bit of a um, inbox review of the, don't even ask me how to pronounce this, the Gushulz wagon, not sure how to pronounce it, <clears throat> but this is a prototype that the, the Alloys found at the end of the war. Um, it's a mammoth big thing, it's just massive this thing. Um, it was developed by the, the um, Krupp factory and um, they sort of developed to carry the big gun and like I say they only found a prototype of it when they, they sort of overtook Germany they found this prototype it was partially um, assembled it wasn't fully assembled it was only partially assembled so this thing's a bit of a, a what if I guess um, I mean things like this kits like this is something that you can sort of build up to to whatever standard you want you know so I mean you can it's it's a fantasy thing if you want to if you, you can have it so it's been in the battlefield or whatever this one here, uh, I'm probably going to build to sort of show that it's been found in a factory and um, still partially assembled or whatever. But um, this is a mammoth big kit. It's it's a huge big box, and uh, it's bought out by Trumpeter, uh, 135th scale, obviously. And there's not much to see on the box except the box art on here is just beautiful. Uh, on the side, it's got a little bit of history about the the uh, tank itself, um, and it's just got photos, well not photos, but um, pictures of basically the same as what you see on the top here in the same colour on the, with side profiles and front profiles. Now this kit, um, I have had this open and had a look inside, it has got an interior like an engine, driver's seat, all that sort of stuff so you can you can build a full interior in this. But what we'll do now guys, we'll open up the box. Um, now this is going to go at the front of my build video as well. Uh, I am going to build this straight away, um, so I'm going to do an inbox review, and this is going to be the first section of my build as well. So we'll take the the lid off. I haven't had this open for a while, guys, so forgive me if it's got moths or something in it. But um, <clears throat> as you can see, the box is absolutely chock as full of, of nice stuff. And then one of the things that sticks out to me with this kit is the uh, the metal tracks it, that's beautiful to have a kit like this and they throw in the metal tracks with it just beautiful um, so that'll give us the option to have this thing sitting with full tracks and have all the sag and all that sort of thing because obviously the way the tracks are on this thing you can see on the um, the diagram here they sag right down inside there uh, off the off the um, drive wheels they sag right down in amongst all those wheels so having metal tracks allows you to to be able to have all that nice sag in there so the first thing we'll do we'll have a quick look through the um the instruction booklet here forgive my dirty hands guys i, I am actually modeling at the moment um so first page i might just see if i can zoom out any further no i can't um but first thing we've got to got our sprue call outs here now obviously there's a heap of sprues here um so what i'm going to go go through first thing i'm going to go through and put um tape on each one of them and draw the letter on the tape so that I can find the sprues easy. And then the first thing, like all armour, we start off with our running gear. Um, so obviously, being such a mammoth thing, you can see here how much running gear there is on this thing. It's just, it's absolutely massive. Uh, but I'm really looking forward to doing this build because because it is such a huge beast and it's fully detailed. Um, we'll go over to our next page here. And then comes our tracks. Obviously the tracks are something you can do at your own stage. Now with this kit here you've got the metal tracks which I'll be using uh, but you've also got a set of vinyl tracks in there as well. So if you want to go the vinyl track route you can. Um, the vinyl tracks are probably going to be a bit of a pain. You're going to have to run some wire or, or something around the inside of them to get them to get that sag effect. Otherwise they're going to be stretched across um, the, across the drive wheels and the sprockets and so on. But um, anyway, after the tracks, we're, we're starting to go with a bit of interior stuff here. Um, then the engine. Now, this, this is something that's just amazing with this, how detailed this engine is. You can see we've got like two pages full of gear here. Um, the engine, the, the, the gearbox, and even over onto a third page. You can see how detailed that is. It's just absolutely fantastic. So this thing's really nicely detailed. And as you see, <clears throat> all that work goes down into here. And that's it. Um, looks like our firewall here has got all the detail on it as well, our driver's seat, all the driver's gears in there as well, the, the pedals and the levers and all that sort of thing. And then our fan assemblies, the fan assemblies aren't as complex, there's a few parts in them, but um, they're not as complex as say the engine and that. 
but you don't really need them to be and they, they drop down either side of the engine there and then it's just sort of over onto a few more little plates on the on the outside um, and the same thing but on the opposite side and as you can see that there's just so much detail in this all these little parts that have got to go on these side plates and then they drop down into place um, so you're looking at this is where the gun will be housed down inside here so all those nice little details will be nicely sitting in there uh, then we have sort of like the, the the cover over the front part here going together with the hatches and so on um, obviously you, know, you can have the hatches open um, so you can show off all that detail that's sitting inside there that's what I'm sort of planning to do if you've got that nice detail in there you obviously want to show it off so I'm going to go with that um, some more detail going on here as you can see these instructions have got you know all these little pieces go together just to make up the one little part that goes in there this is obviously the the, the holder for the, the actual gun itself then we've got the barrel going together over here and then the gun going together and then going into the holder um, so I mean there's a lot of detail well, there's four pages there just to put that gun together and then obviously you've got um, some more detail going around where the gun will be housed and, and where it's going to be sliding backwards and forwards and where it's actually um, mounted to the, to the tank itself so more detail even in that part there and as you can see it's a mammoth big thing it's absolutely enormous but this is going to be absolutely beautiful when it's done and over here there's even more going on now um, to add underneath it to make it like you know so it turns a little twists a little bit from side to side and then it finishes off over here so you've got your gun assembly in one piece and your main tank in another piece you can have them separated if you want uh, I'm not sure, I, I know I have seen some photos of this thing that photos the Allies took when they found it but I can't remember if the gun was in it or not, I think the gun was separate but I, I don't know, I'll have to look that up guys but anyway that's the instructions for it um, we have our, our um, colour call out there as you see it's just done in the uh, the undercoat that the Germans would have had it in uh, but I mean it's up to you, that, like you know whatever colours you want to put on there being um, a bit of a fantasy thing so these are obviously the side walls here bit of detail put in them, some nice rivet detail and stuff like that these are all the little um, push handles and stuff like that that go on it in around the inside there I can't see much flash, I can see a couple of little injector pin marks hopefully yeah, I see injector pin marks like really bad on the inside of here. Hopefully, we might be able to. I'm not sure if something covers those up or not, but anyway, we have to find that out when we start doing the build. Um, then in here, I, honestly, I don't know what a lot of these parts are. A lot of this here is to do with the actual main gun itself and the breech and all that sort of stuff going together. Uh, but again, I can't see any flash or anything on these. They, they look really nice and crisp some really nice detail down on some of these little parts here um, but yeah that all looks nice even like these little little parts down in here like little handles and stuff like that some really nice detail etched into those and here looks like we have our engine and fans and so on as you can see up here the fans are sort of done in one mainly mainly one solid block um, the engine's got all these details that I've got to go on to build the engine up so very nice this looks like the base of the actual um, the barrel of the actual gun itself and that's actually huge absolutely huge that thing so yeah this is going to look really awesome when it's built guys it's a massive big piece of armour so here we have the top part here the, the cover plate goes over the top of the base and all that sort of thing um, these are all down on the floor in the back where the gun goes we've got a firewall going on there again some beautiful detail moulded into these really really nice really crisp um, most of this stuff here, I can see injector pin marks all over it, but I've, all this stuff should be all on the underneath the stuff, so you shouldn't be able to see all that. Um, down in here, now this all looks like part of the base, okay, we've got our dry sprockets and things like that, and spring work. Um, these will have to be the mounting housings on the outside. Yeah, same on that side, but yeah, again, really nice detail in there. Here's the start of our wheels going on, guys. Um, and as you can see, we've got like what four sprues full of wheels there that you would go together. And this one here, this is more of the engine block, guys. So that shows you how detailed it is. The second sprue I've come across with the engine parts. 
um, and there's more engine parts. I'm not sure some of those parts. I'm not sure what they are, but um, I see a bit of a jerry can. I think happening there, but really nice with detailed again. And this this here is all obviously the the plate where the, the actual main part of the gun sits on, where it can swivel a little bit. Uh, with these plates here, uh, some beautiful rivet detail going on here. Again down the sides here. These are the sides of the gun. Um, again, this is the side plates and beautiful detail on these. Really nice big, thick rivets and that going on there for something that would have been this massive. Obviously, would have had a lot of a um, lot of heavy riveting going on to hold the thing together. So it looks really nice, guys. Uh, and we have a little bit of photo etch. So obviously, the photo etch is um, like most Dragon and Trumpeter kits. They provide the photo etch to go over your grills, your vents, and things like that. So that looks nice as well. So anyway, guys, um, hope you enjoyed the the inbox review. And I will get on and do this build now. And obviously, like most builds, I turn the camera back on as we get to certain stages in the build. Okay, modelers. So today we're going to be looking at working with metal tracks. Um, now these are for all tracks, but there's different brands of these. Um, these tracks are fairly expensive to buy. I don't use them a lot, uh, just so happens these came with the kit that I'm building at the moment. Um, so that's why I'm actually using these. Now, if I'm going to buy metal tracks, I'll try and look for the cheaper brands, which are, well, maybe not exactly as good, but they're okay. Um, and there is a few little tricks to actually using these things and putting them together. Um, they are the, the top notch once you once you get them right and you put them on. They're just they're beautiful. It gives weight to the model. Um, you can put the sag and all that sort of stuff in them. They're not sort of stuck in one position. You can sort of move them around. Very very good products. These. That's why a lot of modelers do use these. But like I say, they do. It's an extra cost of putting a kit together. Um, you can do the same thing with Magi tracks and stuff like that. It's just that they're not movable and all that sort of stuff. But you can get the same effect. Um, if I have the option, I would like to use metal tracks all the time, but with the expense, yeah, it's something you've got to weigh up for yourself. But anyway, guys, they normally come just in a box like this, like in a pack, and they're made for one specific piece of armour normally. Um, and inside we have, the first thing you normally have is your little list of instructions here. Now, the instructions are very, very basic. Uh, it just gives you, like, you know, cleaning up the tracks, drilling the hole, um, you need a, a 0.5 millimeter drill to drill the holes out, which is the small little tiny needle drills that we use in modeling. Uh, like sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't, but it's best to just run that drill through there to make sure that the eyelets are, are open to put the wire through. But they're very basic instructions, guys. Um, even the cleaning up part of it, um, sometimes you've got to do a little bit of cleaning up, other times they're molded nice enough, you don't have to worry about it. There's no seams or spikes or anything hanging off them. So that's your instructions. Have a quick look at those when you get it out. Um, the next thing, we have our roll of uh, wire here. That's the part that's going to go through the links to link the tracks together. Now, they give you enough to do them, but don't waste it when you're doing it because they do give you normally just enough to do it. If you have to, you can cut some wire, some other copper wire out of spare wire if you've got lying around, which I have over there. Um, but I like to use this stuff. It's it's meant to do the job. Um, it's and like I say, that there's enough there definitely to do it, but just don't be wasteful with it. And then normally the last part is the two bags with the actual tracks in them. Now you've got, normally got the left and the right track. Now what I normally do, I'll, I'll mark the bag left and, and right as I put them together. Um, now when you tip these out, um, I have a cup or something to the side so that I can put them in that cup and keep them definitely separated. So when you've cleaned it up, put it in the cup uh, one at a time until you fill the cup up and then start gluing them together. Um, the other thing is don't tip both bags yet because if you put a, you know, if you mix them up, that's it. It's it's very hard to sort of find out which one you've, you've put in backwards. So anyway, guys, that's that's what's in the package, and I'll just get set up and I'll start putting some of these together and I'll turn the video back on and I'll show you how we actually put these things together. Okay, modeler, so I'm starting putting the uh, tracks together now. Now, when you do this, please wear gloves, especially with these furrow tracks. Um, they have a lead component to them, and they're very soft, and they bend very easy because they're pretty much made of lead. Uh, they're like a lead silver, I think, the, the compound is. Um, so please wear gloves because lead can actually soak through your skin, and um, yeah, you can end up with lead 
difficulties in your body or whatever it is, lead poisoning, maybe not lead poisoning, you have to have a fair bit in your body for that, but it's not good for you to have lead sort of absorbed in your body. Wear gloves when you do it. Uh, so anyway, I've started on the track here, I've got the links over in a cup on the side like I was saying before. I take one link out at a time, like this guy here, and I, hopefully I can get this camera to focus for you guys while I do this. Uh, please forgive me, I'm at, uh, like always guys, I'm at an awkward angle. Um, so you run the, the drill bit through, okay. Now I mount my drills just on the end of a toothpick, so it saves me changing you know going over to different size drills all the time so you just run it through now if the link is bent like I say these things bend easy um, like just straighten it out before you run the drill through there okay run it through that way now one of these will have see if I'll find it there okay that one there's got a closed end on it as you can see it's not actually opened up so you want to drill from the other end where it's open and run it through. Now the drill may go through very easy like it is on this link here because the holes are fairly clean um, and I can see that one's bent a bit so I'm just going to straighten that out um, get it to run into there. Now when you go into that last bit there, that last one just give it one little twist like that just to clean it out but don't go all the way through, okay? And then we put it down into the into its position where it's going to go. Now just check because there can be a little bit of um, you know like a little bit of seam and stuff like that you've got to clean up and where I've bent that obviously it's a little bit out of alignment so just sort of look at it with your eye make sure it's nice and straight and put it in its line. Well, like I say guys it's a little bit awkward because I'm doing this at a weird angle because I've got the camera sort of at the side of my head. Now just get your wire okay and start feeding it through. Now it can be a little bit a little bit of a chore to get the first one lined up. Okay, but once you get through that first one normally it's a bit easier to go through the rest as long as you've got it sitting you know sitting in there like so. Now I usually use a set of tweezers like this and that helps me put a little bit of force on the wire to push it through but don't don't force too much where you're going to bend the wire okay now keep looking to make sure that when you get to the end like we are there now we're on the last link and it's gone into that little where I was saying you got that closed bit give it one more little push okay to make sure it's definitely seated in there and then give it a snip snip it off nice and flush like so okay and then I just use a bit of super glue and I just dab on the end there. Now you can put the super glue on the end like I just said, or you can put super glue on the wire as you're pushing it through. You just got to be careful if you push, put it on the wire first to push it through because it can start getting a bit sticky as the super glue sets. Um, doing it that way though, make sure that it's definitely going to hold in there. Uh, putting a dab on the ends on here, sometimes that can sort of break if you, you know, you're moving the tracks around a bit. It can crack the super glue off the end of it. But normally the wire doesn't work its way out. And if it does, you just got to push it in um, when you get the model in place. Push those little pins in there as you set the tracks. And, you know, like just leave it. Because obviously you're not going to be wheeling the thing around like a toy. But, um, but just check that because it, it can ruin it if you, there's a bit of wire hanging out the end. I can actually see one there that's sticking out the end a little bit. So I'll push that back in. Like that. And that's, that's all it is, guys. When it's, if it works its way out, just push it in. Um, I'm going to go through and super glue these afterwards. I'll go through and put the links together and then super glue it. Now I'll show you the model I'm trying to make these tracks for. It's um, this thing here, which I'm doing a video for. And as you can see, this thing is massive. So I've got a, a whole heap of work to put these tracks together. It can be a very time consuming chore, uh, very tedious. Uh, I just put a movie on the background and I just go through the motions and do it. Uh, but it's definitely worthwhile doing metal tracks, guys, and doing them properly if you have got them. They do cost you a bit of money, so it's definitely worth the time, putting the time in to make sure they're done correctly. So anyway, guys, hopefully you got something out of this video, and I will see you in the next video. Okay, modelers, as you can see, the, uh, the track's pretty much all together here now. 
and um, you know, like you can see, you can actually move them around. They're, they're beautiful things. Like once they're together, and yeah, you, know, you can really pose them wherever you want and however you want. Now, the one last thing is obviously you've got to paint these things because they're they're just that silver lead look. So. There's two different ways you can go about doing this. Now, one of them is you can use burnishing fluid, which is a fluid you, you put them in there, leave them in there, and it'll actually turn them to like a rusted, dark sort of colour. Um, and you can take them out and use them straight away like that. Now, there's also an older um, version called Blacken It, which will actually, like it says, blacken the tracks up. Um, I don't actually use those. Um, I haven't got any, so I've never used it. I have used vinegar. To varying effects, it, it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. I think it depends on the metal consistency in these. Um, but generally, all I do is paint them like I do any other track, uh, with your blacks, your rust colours, your dirt and dust and things like that, um, and they'll paint up fine. The only thing is, when you start moving them around and banging them together, it'll knock the paint off and go back to the silver colour. So um, be careful with them once you've painted them. Uh, put an undercoat on there to make like help the paint stick to it obviously but that goes for if you put them in burnishing fluid as well because what happens is um, it's only a thin layer of rust or whatever that's over it and as you move them around it'll actually knock that off the good thing about it is that high parts of the tracks where it's been used you can actually get that that paint or um, the weathering effect off the top part of the track to shine those up much easier uh, just to, even with a really fine sandpaper just run over it and it looks beautiful but anyway guys that's pretty much um, all I can tell you about working with metal tracks uh, when this model yeah you know, this model I'm working on you'll see it up on my channel and you can have a look at them see them when they're finished um, but beautiful stuff they are an, a, a, an extra an extra option that you can put on your kits just be aware they're not cheap um, especially if you go for the uh, floral ones like I've got here I was just lucky these came with the kit but to buy them separate they're not cheap um, and these days all the add-ons that we buy for our, our equipment it's it can add up fairly quickly there are cheaper options but the cheaper options there's not a lot of them um, out there at the moment I mean there's a few around but not a lot uh, for all seem to have the the main part of the market as far as metal tracks okay modeler so I'm up to the stage now I've got the interior pretty much all together in there um, it's it is hard to see a lot of it but there is some awesome detail inside this thing. The engine is just fully detailed, just beautiful. But once it's down inside there, you you can't see a lot of it. Um, the fader etch blades aren't glued in place yet, guys. They're a little bit crooked. I've got to line them up yet, but everything else is glued in place there. I've got to go around and clean up some of the seam lines and stuff like that. But um, once the hatches are on this, or once the, the top plate is on this thing and, and you open up the few hatches that there are, you're really not going to see a lot inside there. So and plus this thing here is supposed to be on a factory floor where they, they were trying to complete it before the war ended so it would never actually have been driven it may have been started to test run it and stuff like that but would never have got the chance to get all dirty and gritty and beaten up so i'm just going to paint the interior in the base colors that it would have been painted in now the same with the inside in the back here we can see the the seats and that now the actual one that they did find was nowhere near as complete as this didn't have anything on the inside here uh, the main gun wasn't in it yet um, they just sort of found a, a like a blank hull basically uh, did have the wheels on it but no tracks um, so this is a bit of a what if thing and that's one of, one of the things I love about building models like this you can do it any way you please because it is just a what if model so anyway guys like I say I'm just going to paint the interior in the, the base colors then I'll go ahead and start putting the hatches and side walls stuff on um, once that's complete, then I'll start doing the um, uh, my finishing off. I'm going to do a bit of rusting and a bit of um, base colour and stuff like that. But I'll turn the video on at that stage. But just got to say, it's a really beautiful kit, guys. Everything went together really nice. There is a lot of work in putting the engine together and the gearbox and that. Um, there's quite a few parts to put it all together. Even the um, gearbox is, is hidden inside this housing here. Underneath there is like a full gearbox assembly. It's just beautiful, but you're never going to see it, unfortunately. Unless you want to have all this stuff displayed outside with the, the top off it, so they're getting ready to put it together or whatever. But I just thought I'd turn the camera on at this stage and just let you know that it is a really nice kit at this stage. Now, I think the problems may start when I start trying to put the, the, the top lid on here and the sides and stuff like that, because I can see that things don't seem to be... I don't know, not, they're not lined up perfectly. There seems to be a bit of a bend in the middle of this thing. 
but I'll find that out I guess when I start working on the side walls. But anyway guys, I'll keep cracking on with this and I'll turn the camera on at the next step. Okay modelers, just a quick update here. I've started doing the uh, the side walls on the back of, um, of this machine and it's got injector pin marks all over it. And I was thinking at first maybe there's another plate that goes over it to cover it, but there isn't. This is the actual, you're actually going to see these things. Um, if you've got the big gun inside there, maybe it'll hide them a little bit. But honestly, it's worth getting rid of them now. And some of them are fairly deep. So what I've done is just put some um, Mr. Surfacer in there. I'll let that set and I'll sand it back out. Um, and then I'll build up the, those walls. But um, yeah, just be aware of it, guys. On both sides, this one here as well. And they are very, very severe, guys. So you will have to get rid of them. Um, like I say, I thought there was an inner wall that went on it that would cover it up, but there's not. These, what you see is what you get, basically. So they do have to be taken care of. But anyway, guys, I'll start getting on with this and I'll turn the camera back on the next day. Okay, modelers, so we've we're pretty much got the, the thing together now. There's a few hatches on top and that, that I have to put on there yet. But um, what I'm doing now is going around and putting weld seams everywhere. Um, if you look on the box art and stuff like that and even on the, on the real thing, um, you don't see the weld seams. There's not good enough photos to see weld seams, but I sort of take it they'd have weld seams along some of these, these things here because it was really heavy plate they used to build this thing. So there'd be cutting marks and weld seams and stuff like that. And plus, because it's artistic license, this is something that never actually existed except for like a bit of a prototype that they found that hadn't only been half built. Um, it's sort of artistic license, so I'm going to put weld seams on all the joins and that. Now, the way I'm doing it, I use um, this stuff here. It's just reflective tape, like safety reflective tape. It's fairly stiff. And it's got a clear backing on it. Now all I do is just give me a moment here off camera because I need my glasses on to be able to do this. It's got a little bit of a clear backing on it that you have to peel off. Just give me a minute to peel that off. And all I do is run it along where that seam is that, that I, that I want to actually put the, uh, the weld on. Now, I'm not going to do this exactly right because I'm doing this at a really weird angle at the moment. I'll go off camera and put it down properly in a minute. Now, all I do is I run that along there. Obviously, I need a longer piece. Now, once I got that down, I just use this thing here. It's a trumpeter panel line scriber. You can use that or you can just use the back of your, um, your hobby knife. Um, now, when, when you start working on a seam, you just let the weight of the knife go through first and just run it backwards and forwards a few times once there's a bit of a groove in there then you can start putting a little bit of pressure on it but just be careful you don't put the pressure on too early because if you slip out you're going to have a big gouge out you've got to fill in so all I'm going to do now guys is go off camera and do that um, the next step is um, stretching out some sprue like melting sprue and stretching it out laying that in that, that panel line that you've scribed in there melting it down with glue and then stabbing it with the end of a like a sharp object like your hobby knife to make it look like a weld seam in there but um, I'll get on with um, scribing the lines first and I'll go through I'll turn the camera back on when I get down to laying the seams and stuff like that okay modelers so we're up to the stage now I've put the panel scribes in there and you can see this front part here I've already got a bit of stretch sprue in there and I've glued it down and put a little bit of a weld seam sort of look to it and I just want to show you how I'm doing it now. I've, I'm doing two different techniques here to show you some different ways you can do this. This one down here, all I've done is put tape either side of the seam. And then I'll just put the Mr. Surfacer 500 in there. Um, let it set for a little while so it's still a little bit soft. Take the tape off and then use the end of your hobby knife to sort of dab into it. To give you that, that welded sort of look to it. Now, the reason I do this before I sort of texture the metal is because if you do make slips with your scriber um, when we texture the metal up it, it should be able to cover most of that up but I'll just show you the um, the sprue technique that I've got here so I've got a bit of sprue cut off all you do is sort of melt it and stretch it out to whatever thickness you want and I've got the scribed line in there and all I do is just put it I just need one end in there first which I'm going to put that end in first once you've got it lined up just use a bit of your glue, I'm using the Tamiya glue at the moment. Now just be careful because the capillary action will run back towards your finger and if your finger's still there you're going to end up with a big finger mark in that. So you just do a little bit at a time. 
Um, it's a little bit hard the way I'm doing this guys because again like I've, the way I've got the camera or where I've got the camera set up compared to how I'm looking at this. Okay, a little bit more glue like so. I have enough there so it sort of softens all the plastic up around it. Okay. Don't let it sort of pop too far outside the groove. And all you do is just keep running back until you get right back to the start of that, that scene. What I'll do, I'll try and finish this off guys. It might be a little bit crooked because like I say, I'm doing this at a, that weird angle sort of thing. And it's not too bad there where it is. More glue in there. And that should, the capillary reaction should hold all that in place there now. Let's hold it for a second and let it go. Now, if it's sticking outside the seam a little bit, you can use like a steel ruler and it might be a little bit crooked so you can straighten it up with your steel ruler, push it in. If you've got enough glue there, it'll soften the plastic up, not only the seam, but it'll also soften up where it's going in. So just sort of push it in a little bit. Now this is a little bit wet while I'm doing this. You should sort of let it dry a little bit more than this. Okay. And it'll be a little bit easier to control. As you see, it's a little bit hard to control the way it is. It's a little bit too wet. Okay, so I'll let that sit for a minute or so until glue evaporates. Then I'll put a little bit more glue on there. I'll just sort of show you this little bit here. Like I say, it's, it's a little bit wet at the moment. <clears throat> and all you do is just use the end of your knife and just sort of stick it in there. Like so. And as you can see, it's a bit wet because it's moving around a lot. But if you, if you give it a minute or so for that glue to take effect and soften that up, just start dabbing it in there and you'll end up with that weld seam look. If it's a bit too stand standout-ish, like if it's sort of sticking out of the groove too much, you can go over with a bit of sandpaper and knock it back a bit and then put the glue on and then restart again. It's a little bit time consuming doing this, but it does make a big difference when this thing is finished. You're going to see, um, you know, look, we'll have rusted metal and then we'll have where they've actually welded the shiny parts and the dark and burnt parts where they've actually welded these seams together. But anyway guys, I'm going to get on with doing the same technique over the rest of the tank. I've just done this seam here with the putty um, and when we finish the thing I'll be able to show you the difference between that seam and that seam sort of thing because they're fairly close together and you'll be able to see the difference in the different techniques. But anyway guys, I'll keep going on with this and I'll turn the camera back on at the next step. Okay modelers, so we're up to the point now, I've got all the weld seams in and I'm just putting the, the texture on the plates. Um, now with these big thick metal plates that the Germans used, they did have a bit of texture on them. They, they weren't smooth. Um, they did have a bit of rough texture on them. So all you need to do guys is use the Mr. Surfacer stuff. Use a really rough old brush. Well, don't use a new brush on this because you're going to just ruin the brush when you do it. Okay, and just stipple it on like so. Okay, and as it dries, keep going back over the same spots. And what it does, it leaves a really rough texture over the top of where you want it to be. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the whole tank like this. Give it that rough texture. And as it's drying, keep going over and stippling over the top of it. Okay, and you might get a little few little lumps and things like that. It doesn't matter though, because what you're going to do is... As this dries, keep stippling it and it's going to end up fairly rough looking. Okay, now that's a really textured sort of look on there now. Now, what I'm going to do, oh, sorry, I bumped that, but um, what I'm going to do now is when that's dried, I'm going to use some um, sandpaper, some really fine stuff, and just sort of dust over it and just sort of knock the high spots off it. And it's going to leave a nice textured sort of look to that metal. Um, you don't want it to be really smooth. Uh, because what we're going to do is put a bit of a, um, like a, a rust texture over it. So it, like it's bare metal plate that's been pulled off the storage line and just welded into place. So just, you know, and if you want to make it even more textured, like as it dries, put a little bit more on there and go over it again if you want to. And that makes it even rougher. Okay, like so. But it's up to you. The sort of the, it's sort of up to you what sort of look you want to end up with. Um, with this one here, I want it to be um, really rough because I'm going to have just rusted raw plate. They pulled off, cut it to shape, and then welded it into place. 
and that's that's as far as they've got. They haven't sanded a back to paint or anything like that, so it's just going to be a rough sort of raw plate. But anyway, guys, I'm going to go over all the pieces I need to in, in this this technique, and I'll turn it back on when we get into um, putting the rust texture on there. Okay, modelers, so we're point that we're up to here now. I've got most of the thing sort of roughly painted, but the look I'm after here is I'm going to have some rusted panels still on there and some of it that's been partially painted. So it looks like they've put the thing together just recently and they have started painting it, but then they're interrupted because, you know, the end of the war come around, things like that. Um, so I'm just starting to rust this side here. Now the effect that I'm actually after, what I want to end up with, is like I've got in this side here with the welds and the burns <coughs> and the, the rusted plates. So all I've done, <coughs> the first step, is just using the sponge technique with a few different rust colours over the whole lot of these panels. And that's just with acrylics, with the different coloured rusts and stuff like that. Now there's no oils, there's no pastels or anything included in that, it's just the, the acrylics up to that stage. So now that I've got that roughly around the sort of shades that I want and things like that, what I'm going to do is seal that now with an, an acrylic um, flat varnish. Okay, so we want a fairly good coat of this on here. Now, this is the um, the new one. I've just I've only just got this stuff. It's the AK uh, matte varnish, an acrylic one. And I'm just trying this out because I used to use the uh, the dull coat, but the problem with the dull coat when you used um, the oils and stuff over the top to try and weather it. Uh, what used to happen is it used to break through that dull coat as well and go to the stuff underneath if you played with one area too long. If you give it long enough to dry and you didn't play too much with any one area, it was fine. But um, yeah, this stuff here, hopefully because it's acrylic and it does leave a good um, matte finish, hopefully this stuff will work a lot better. You can see where I've gone a bit heavy handed there. That's not going to matter. This should dry nice and flat, so it's not really going to matter. But you want to give it, make sure you've got a good coat on there so it's pretty well sealed. I don't build it up too much but um, you know give it a couple of coats like that and I'm just going to let that sit and dry for about 10 minutes then I'll probably give it another really fine coat over the top of that just to make sure I've got everything and then I'll start on the next part of the weathering process okay guys so I'm just going to quickly show you how I'm rusting this thing up and it, it, I'm just going to do it on this little panel here because it won't take too long to do it uh, where if I do it on a bigger panel it's going to take forever but um, the look I'm after at the end of this process is what's on the front here. Get that to focus for you. You can see there's different rust textures and stuff on there. Now, that's just been achieved with oil paints. And I just got to make sure that I'm going to get this thing to focus where I need it to focus. Um, actually, I might have to do it on a different angle or something maybe. So what I'll do guys, I'll, I'll do it on a little bit of this top panel here, it's just much easier to focus. So all I've done I, on this palette here, I've just got different oil paints mixed up. Yellows and oranges and things like that and dark browns. And I, I mix them up, I've got a little bit of white there to lighten colours up and stuff like that. So just play around mixing your oil paints and getting some nice different rust tones and things like that. Um, there's, there's no There's no sort of... Um, right and wrong colour or anything like that. Rust is, is like so many different colours, it's unbelievable. Um, so all I do, the first colour, I just put a few little dabs of it around like so. Okay, I'm just going to do a little bit on this one guys. Now wipe that colour off. I've got a couple of lighter shades here that I'm going to mix in with it. Okay, so the lighter shades will go in some different areas. Now, the idea is to try and make this uneven, guys, so if you want to paint a few little lines around like so, and down there, so what will happen is it will sort of blend in when we, we go to the next step. Now, the next step, normally you let that oil dry out just a little bit, but um, because I'm trying to show you guys on video what I'm doing, I'm not going to let that dry out. So all I've done is, is dab my brush in some white spirit, okay? Just mix it around, wipe off the excess, a little bit more clean white spirit. Okay, we're going into that yellowy colour now. Okay, put that back in there as well. And all you're doing is blending those colours in, okay? So you don't want to sort of completely make them disappear, and you don't want to leave them just like that, like where it's just a plain, you know, orangey colour. 
try and take off the excess a little bit, mix it back in with the last little bit you've done. Now if you notice some paint coming off with this guys, it's because I haven't put a coat on it yet. Uh, but it's just this is just going to show you the techniques I'm using to um, to get that that rust tones and stuff like that. So when you get a spot like that, blend it in, move it around a bit. So it's not just one little dot anymore. It's actually been moved around. Okay. Same with this dot here. Okay. There's a fair bit there. I'll wipe the excess off, and I'm going to blend it in with the surrounding area. And you can already see where the stuff up above there is drying out and then getting, getting those different rust tones okay and here we've got two the two that are blending together like so take the excess off a little bit more clean fluid dab it on the tissue because you don't want it to be too wet and you don't want it to be too dry it's a little bit of sort of playing around but you'll get the feel of it after a while guys and you can see there's a couple of dots in there that are fairly thick so we want to blend those back out again like so okay you can blend it all the way back up into the stuff you done up the top there you can see there's a couple of bits where the paint has lifted off there but i'll go over those and um fix those up later guys this is just to show you how i'm doing my rust effects okay now there's no harm in having a couple of areas where like down here there's more of the orangey dark sort of orangey browny sort of color than there is of the yellow um, you will have areas look look with rust when you look at the the way rust forms there will be areas where it's much more of one color than another okay now I see this paint lifting off there so I'm just going to stop there now okay and I'll go on to the yellow stuff but it's just the same the same thing guys just keep blending it and blending it and blending it okay like so I'll blend it into that bit just worried I'm going to lift more paint off here, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Like I say, I'll go over and fix it up later on. But anyway, guys, as you can see, that drying, it's um, it's leaving some really nice tonal effects. Now, you go over this several times. Don't just do it once. Go, keep going over it with different tones, and you will end up with that sort of effect there. Okay, here we get the camera to focus. Come on, camera. There we go. And you can see it looks really, really good, guys. Just keep going over it, and the next step is uh, mix in some pastels with it as well. Go over with some pastels um, to give you some more tones, and that gives you texture as well. Now, I've got to do this over both these big panels here, um, so obviously it takes a while to do this, but it's really worth your while to spend your time to get some really nice effects like that there. That looks beautiful, and plus, you know, you've got the dark and welding and cutting effects and things like that. Especially on a project like this, I'll turn it up here so you can hopefully get to see the side here. Come on, camera. Okay, so you can see there, I'm pretty much finished on those sides. That's the sort of effect I'm after. It's it's very, very tonal. It's got so many different colours of rust in it. Okay, and there's no one pattern sort of thing. Now, the other thing you can do is, like, put, um, put some strips of tape over, leave a little tiny strip vacant. Um, put a different colour in there so it looks like metal's been sort of leaning against each other and left a, a, a stripe in there with a different tone, like a really light yellow colour or something like that. But, you know, you can just keep playing around these effects, guys. Um, that's all I do. I don't, I don't have a certain technique that I just stick to all the time in certain colours. I just keep playing around with mixing the colours and keep going over it till it looks good. The thing is, if, if you get to a point where you think, no, I've just gone too far, and, this isn't working out. Just get a brush, load it up with your white spirit, and just work it over the, the surface that you've done, and it'll take all that stuff back off there. So hopefully you can see there now. It might be a little bit bright. Um, but you can see where those different tones are starting to take effect there now. Once you go over the whole panel and put the burn effects in there, this is going to look absolutely superb. So anyway, guys, I'm going to keep going on with this, because like I say, it's a bit of a chore. It's going to take me a while to do it. And I'll turn the camera back on at the next step. Okay, modelers, so the point we're up to now, I've done all the oil paint stuff that I want to do, and all I've done is just dusted up some um, pastel powders on the side here, and I'm just going over with the pastel powders now, and it's the same thing, you just want to blend in some different colours, okay? So I've got like a bit of a bright orange here, I'm going to go in here, put a bit of bright orange in this section, okay, rub them around in a bit of a circular motion and get them to blend in with the colour that 
is right beside it, okay? Now again, it's mixing powders, the same as you did with the oils. Mix up some different colours, don't go with the same colours, like, you know, have quite a few different colours there that you want to mix in. Okay, now this does two things, it, it gives that, that nice textured look, so you're getting a bit of texture in there, um, as well as the different colours. Because rust comes in so many different colours, everything from almost black to almost bright yellow. Um, so you want to go over with lots of different colours and just keep brushing them in. And again, if you don't like the look, you can just use your brush and brush it off and um, start again. So what I've done, I've put a, a clear coat of um, the, the matte varnish again. Now the idea of using a matte varnish is that the matte allows a surface that the powders can hang on to much better. If you had like a glossy surface on there, it's very, very hard to get them to hang on to there. So I'm just, I've got a palette over the side here, I've crushed up lots of different pastels. I'm just mixing colours as I go through um, and I'll keep going through until I get all these panels done up. Now, it, it, it's, it seems like a shame, but some of these panels are going to be covered up by the undercoat colour because, it's, like I say, this tank's going to be something that um, they've built. They're starting to spray the undercoat and they got interrupted, so half of these are going to be sort of covered up anyway, um, so you, you, you won't see it. But using the pastels um, gives it texture and also doing the whole panel allows you to decide where you want the undercoat to stop and start. If you just want like a little bit of drift over the front here and have the rest of it, you know, rust it up, that's fine. If you want to have it sort of like the lower part's already been painted in the top half, I mean, it gives you that option. So once you've done the rusting, you sort of decide in your mind, like get a picture of what you want it to end up like. And you do get a much better idea of what you want to end up with once the whole thing's rusted up as to what panels you want to put the undercoat on. So anyway guys, I'm going to keep on going with this now, and this is the last step in the rusting coat, except for putting that matte varnish over it to hold those pastels in place, because if you don't do that, every time you touch it, it's going to rub some off. So I'm going to finish this off, put a matte varnish over it, and then I'm going to put the undercoat colour, the base colour, over the bits that I want painted. Okay guys, I'll keep going on with this, and I'll turn the camera back on at the next Okay step. modelers, so we've got our metal tracks together here. And all I've done is give them just one really quick coat of, um, it's like a German grey, black grey, like NATO black, I think it's called, from the Tamir colours. Um, I would give you the proper name, but I'll front, oh, there it is. Yeah, NATO black. And all I've done is give it just one quick spray over with that. I did put an undercoat on it, but the undercoat's not hanging on to the metal very well. And that's one of the things with metal tracks, the paint doesn't sort of like to stick to it because it's got that lead zinc compound and it, it, yeah, it's hard to get anything to grip to it. Every time you bump them, paint's going to come off these things. So anyway, I've just put that coat over it. And the next thing I'm going to do is just put um, this stuff here, which is the AK wash. It's like a rusty sort of colour. Okay, I'm going to put that wash over it. And hopefully that'll help the paint hang on a little bit and um, it'll give the tracks a little bit a little bit more life. Because what I want to do is have these tracks so they've been sitting there and rusting and you know without use they would have been sitting on the floor and they would have rusted. Just give me a moment guys, just gotta find the right brush, that one there will do. Okay, just use an old brush for this guys. Okay, I'm just gonna get a little bit of that wash and just start dabbing it on there, okay. Now you want to get it all down in the, all the crevices and stuff like that because this is the, the start of your rusting, okay? And as you can see, it's a really nice colour. Um, it's sort of a little bit transparent because it's got quite a bit of thinner in it. That's the way it comes out of the jar. And as it dries, it's a little bit transparent, so you're still going to get that black through there. But you're going to have nice little pools of rust, especially if you put enough on there. It's going to have some nice little pools of rust starting to build up. In some of the parts of the track okay so that's just the first step guys we probably can't see that all that well at the moment but as it dries that's going to really start bringing these tracks to life um, as in bring them to life as and look like dead rusted tracks so yeah life and death at the same time uh, but anyway guys I'm going to keep going on with this and you can spray it on if you want but I just don't think it gives you the control as in getting some nice deep pools in some of the tracks and some shallow pools and others. So I like to do it by hand. And as you, you know, as you, as you know, because this tank is so large, these tracks are just huge. So it does take a while. Anyway, guys, I'll turn this back on at the next step. 
Okay, modelers, so the next part of the process is now that we've got the rusted plates on there, we're going to do some burn and weld marks around the uh, the seam lines. Now, I showed you earlier on how I've done the seam lines, and these things would have been, you know, sort of cut to shape, so they would have burns along the edges, and then when they're welded, it would have put extra burns along there as well, but the weld itself would have been nice and shiny, because once you do a weld, normally the welders chip off what they call a the slag, which is a dark cover over it, they chip it off and it would have been nice and shiny if it's fairly new. Give it a month or so and they'd be rusty red as well. But what we're after here is something that's just been welded up. They're starting to paint it and they've just abandoned it. So the first step is I've just got some pastel, uh, black pastel chalk done up over the side here. And anywhere there's weld seams like this, I'm just going to go over it. Not too far, you know, you, like you don't want to do too far into the plates, just on the edges, because the burns aren't going to be that big, they're not going to be sort of halfway up the plate or anything, anything silly like that. Okay, we've done those there now. And then the next part, just to finish it off, I've got a lead pencil that's sharpened up here, and you just want to run over right over the middle where the actual weld seam actual weld lines itself okay now if I get this a little bit wrong just forgive me guys like like always I'm doing this on a little bit of an angle okay now the idea of doing this is with the lead pencil it's a really nice shiny sort of finish to give that nice fresh weld look in the middle okay now hopefully you can see trying to get this camera to make sure it's focused and you can see that there on that corner where the actual weld itself is nice and shiny and you've got that dark seam over the side now if you think it's a little bit too close you can just grab your brush and just go over it nice and gentle like so okay just to spread that seam out a little bit so that's all I'm going to do I'm going to go over all the weld seams and do that same technique then I'm going to put a, a, another clear coat with that varnish, that matte varnish over it. And then I'm going to go over with the undercoat colour and spray where I would have imagined the Germans would have sort of sprayed to a certain point. Got interrupted, dropped the stuff and just left. Okay guys, so I'll keep going on with this and I'll turn the camera back on the next step. Okay, modelers, so as you can see I've pretty much finished off here now. now all I've done since the last step is I've uh, been over and, and used lead pencil over on the weld lines here just to give it that nice um, nice shiny look like nice fresh weld and I've, I've used just a um, I'll pull it out here to show you just a pastel pencil in white just to do some chalk lines like as in measuring and things like that and um, bolt hole um, measurements and stuff like that and I've been over and the undercoat's been sprayed over sort of parts of the tank and as you can see it's sort of half sprayed over the front part here and then the other half is still left for the rust and the shine on it and uh, same down the front here guys it's sort of half the panel's been sprayed over with undercoat and the other half they're still sort of working on so uh, the tracks is just a mixture of different pastel colors like rust colors because the tracks would have been sitting there and just you know look without being used they would have just rusted um, the thing with these metal tracks guys as you handle it it's going to polish up the edges because it's going to chew through whether it's paint, undercoat, doesn't matter what you put on this thing. If you touch your tracks, it's going to go back through to that metal because nothing sort of sticks to it because it's lead zinc and uh, nothing sort of hangs on to it because the lead zinc will break off and leave shiny parts. So be careful when you handle these things. Now one of the things I have done with this is down the front here on this track. I've left it so that this track is actually broken off. Well, not broken off, but they haven't actually put this track together yet. It's just sort of hanging there, waiting to be sort of pinned together. Um, so, like, it just gives it that, that little bit of unfinished look sort of thing. Uh, there's not much else I can sort of say about it, guys. It was a pretty good fit. It went together fairly well. Um, the only thing I can say is when you put the gun together, if you want the gun inside the carriage like this, there's, um, there's big steps and footholds and stuff like that so the gun can be mounted on something outside the tank you've got to leave those off to fit it inside the tank Okay. Now, if you don't do that you're going to have, I'll just pull one over here 
I've got it on the side. <clears throat> this is the back plate that normally would go in down here at the back. Um, if the gun was out of place, you'd have that there and you'd have a big circular piece at the front to hold it in position. Um, because it's mounted inside this thing, you don't need those, okay? Uh, as far as the inside goes, it looks like it's like fairly fresh and new. Uh, I put a little bit of um, pastel powder, like just really light brushed it in there because nothing's been used. Um, it's just got a dust coat over it from sitting there without being used. Anyway, guys, what I'm going to do... Uh, oh, the other thing is too, I've left the, the gun unmounted, like it's not glued in there, okay, it's just sitting there. Um, that's just so I can take it out and, and display this thing without the gun inside it. Um, the thing is, if you want to do that, make sure you weather underneath where the gun sits. So if you want to display it without the gun in there, underneath the gun's going to be weathered as well. Anyway guys, I'm going to take some stills of this, and um, this is going to go at the end of the movie obviously. Now, one of the things is like, pulling your tracks up nice and tight. If you've got one undone like this, I can't glue those metal tracks in there because all it's going to do is just sort of let go and drop off anyway, and then you'll never be able to line it back up again. So I've got the sag in there. I've just got to sit in there like that. I've got a base ready to go over there that I'm going to sort of paint up. Um, so it's just on a concrete base, and once it's sitting on there, and glued down it's never going to move so I don't have to worry about gluing this track in place but anyway guys like I say I'm going to take some stills of this now um, leave the comments below anything you like or don't like about the, the build um, and thank you very much for watching guys subscribe if you haven't subscribed and I'll see you in the next video